Dendritic cells and B cells can identify antigens, they process them, and they present the T cell epitope to the T cell, which will be differentiated into a Th2 with the appropriate co-stimulatory signal from the antigen presenting cell. This Th2 will produce interleukin-4 that eventually will differentiate the B cell lineage into the plasma cell that will produce the antibodies. They can be IgG, IgM, IgA, or IgE. The characteristic is that all of these antibodies produced by the plasma cell identify through the variable region the same antigen that was originally in contact with the antigen presenting cells. Now, the different isotypes or classes are the, in the constant region of the antibodies. And that switch, that change from IgM all the way to IgE, is also driven by that original presentation of the B cell to the Th cell. Depending on the antigen and depending on that T cell epitope, the T cell will drive a different isotype, generally starting with IgM. When the antigen happens to be an allergen that causes an allergic response or a helminth, which are parasitic worms, the response that will be driven is a switch to IgE because this is the way that our body deals with allergens and helminths. When the naive B cell is presented with an allergen or a helminth, the variable region, specifically the genes that are called VDJ genes, will rearrange to bind that particular helminth. But another thing happens downstream. This is the genetic sequence for human genes for antibodies or immunoglobulins. The other thing that happens in the presence of allergens and helminths is an isotype switch. We will review that briefly here. For more detailed information on isotype switch, I have other videos. Let's take a look at now what's going to happen. The first thing I want to show you is the circles are representing what we call the switching region in the genome. And the little rectangles are the, ex the genes that express the constant region. So the S mu and C mu correspond to the switching and the constant region for IgM. Downstream, we have the switching and constant regions for gamma and eventually for epsilon, which would be the switching and the constant region for IgE. What drives this switch to the IgE is precisely that contact with the helminth. That T cell epitope that is presented, that it's helminth or allergen associated will signal to the B cell how to rearrange the gene. So we have a germline gene transcript eventually for IgE. What happens is that this signaling will make the two switching regions between the mu and the epsilon to come together. And the rest of that section will be clipped out. So that particular piece of the gene that contains all the other genes for all the other isotypes or classes is clipped out. And now we have a transcript that goes all the way from the VDJ region, which identifies the helminth or the allergen, to the mRNA that is only producing the epsilon construct, which will translate in an IgE. So this is the way that these plasma cells clip out all the other isotypes and they go directly to IgE while the variable region is identifying the same allergen or helminthic infection. So let's take a look at the role of IgE. The cells that have receptors for IgE are the mast cells and the basophils. As you can see here, I painted the receptor in blue. And this is a high affinity receptor that on exposure to the allergen gets activated. 
The other cells that have been found to have IgE receptors are the eosinophils, but in this case, this receptor has a lower affinity for the IgE FC portion. However, it's also specific for that IgE that is bound to the allergen. This activation of the receptors in the cells is going to produce a degranulation. So what is in these granules? What is it that these three types of cells have? Well, the mast cell will have histamine, heparin, chondroitin sulfate, proteases. The basophil has histamine, chondroitin sulfate, several proteases. And the eosinophil has major basic protein, eosinophil cationic protein. Peroxidases, hydrolases, and lipophospholipases, you can see immediately that all of these are very destructive. They are enzymes. So our own cells are producing very nasty products. And why is this happening? Well, remember that the IgE-mediated response is basically dealing with infections from helminth, which are large worms. And to get rid of those, an antibody alone is not sufficient. So these are mechanisms that we have to deal with large organisms that could be pathogenic. And of course, when they are triggered by an allergic response, we are also having this degranulation cause serious adverse reactions. They stimulate several different types of um, cells in the body. And when it's triggered by IgE, these are usually immediate reactions. This happened within minutes. So that's why when on re-challenge, you get an anaphylactic reaction, you need to observe very quickly, this is gonna happen, could be within five minutes. On the other hand, we have IgE independent responses, as we saw already which are part of this type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. The Th2 and ILC2 cells also create memory against those allergens, and they express several different receptors that identify them that produce, instead of granule release, they produce cytokines, typically interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-13. These three cytokines bind receptors in a variety of cells and that's why they cause many different symptoms associated also to allergic responses or type 1 hypersensitivity responses. Now these are a little bit later because it does take a little longer to get all of these cells proliferating, migrating, uh, relocating to the site of injury or the site where the allergen is. So it can take a little longer than the IgE that's more immediate. The clinical manifestations is what we call an allergic reaction, whereas the specific IgE produced is what we call a topic. So there's a slight difference between the two. They could occur in the same person, but we may have allergic reactions without IgE.